What's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Inside the Vinyl. I'm your host, Tim Bianconi. If you would, go ahead and like, comment, share, and subscribe to my channel below. That would be appreciated. If you could also hit that notification bell so you can be notified anytime we put out new content, that would be appreciated also. So I'm going to dip back into my Lost Classic series once again and talk about an album uh, that I think uh, is highly underrated and doesn't uh, get the respect it deserves, and that would be Bad Company's fourth record, Burning Sky. All right, so this album was released on uh, March the 3rd of 1977. Uh, it was recorded uh, uh, from July to August of 1976. Uh, it was produced by the band, as I think most of their first four or five records were. Uh, maybe the first six, I'm not sure. Uh, it reached as high as number 15 on the Billboard chart and has been certified gold for sales of over half a million copies. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look here. So again... Uh, pretty simple cover. I've seen different versions of it, some that actually have the Bad Company logo on the top, uh, and most that just don't really have much of anything other than a picture of the band here. So uh, there's the front cover. Here's the back cover that doesn't have anything on it except the Swan Song logo uh, at the bottom here. Uh, so nothing too special there. Now, as I said, I've seen some different variations, not only on CD, but record and everything else. Um, you know, that has some different things. So if you open up the gatefold, it's kind of interesting that the cover of the album is all in black and white, but then you open up the cover here and you see what I assume is the burning sky. Uh, but a very pretty uh, uh, inner, inner sleeve here in the gatefold, whatever you call that. All right, so let's take a look at the record. And again, nothing special going on here. I mean, this is the 70s. I don't think there was really anything too fancy. Uh, the inner sleeve looks exactly like the album cover. There is a track listing down there. I'm not sure if you can see that. And then, of course, the other side is just more of the, the, the grainy cover album art. Uh, if we pull the record out, uh, you know, standard vinyl issue for the time, uh, but very cool with that Swan Song logo in the middle. I love all the Zeppelin albums and Bad Company albums that just have that Swan, so that swan Song logo in the middle. I just think it's really cool. Um, and then, of course, you know, here's the other side. All right, so nothing too special there with the album cover, but again, I just, you know, I always find that Swan Song logo pretty cool. All right, so let's get this back together and let's talk about this record a little bit. Uh, we might edit that out. All right, uh, so reviews on this album are pretty mixed. Um, I guess a lot of people felt it didn't really hold up as well when you compared it to uh, their first three records, Bad Company, Straight Shooter, and One With The Pack. Uh, however, I think that's a little unfair. I think this is actually a really cool record. Now it's a little more, it's a little more subdued. Uh, you a little more chill, I guess. I guess you could say than those first three records. Now, those first three records did, you know, have a good mix of rock along with some of the softer stuff, um, you know, which I thought was kind of neat. Uh, I would say this album probably a little more reminiscent of Paul Rogers and Simon Kirk's uh, previous band, Free. Uh, than, than other Bad Company albums. It's a little deeper in my opinion, maybe not so many like radio friendly hits. In fact, I think the only song that still gets radio play is the title track, Burning Sky. But I mean, Morning Sun, Heartbeat, I mean, just, just you know, some really, really great tunes on this album. And like I said, you know, the, it has the feel of those early free albums, you know, a little bluesier, you know, if you can imagine that, than normal Bad Company, maybe a little less commercial than those previous records. Um, you know, there are plenty of other editions of this album. There was the 1994 remasters that you can pick up on CD. Uh, there's a 2017 reissue with an extra disc full of all sorts of extra tunes and outtakes and demos and stuff. Uh, but definitely an album everybody should check out. Um, you know, again, it may have suffered from, you know, oversaturation of the market because this was their fourth record in, I guess, as many years. Um, 74, 75, 70, yeah. Um, and I think at the time... When they recorded this album, Run With The Pack was still doing pretty well on the charts, uh, which is why this one got delayed. But I think maybe by that point, it was just, you know, back then, every band released an album, sometimes two albums a year. And maybe after a while, maybe after three or four years of that, uh, you're not giving, you know, maybe they weren't giving the fans enough time to breathe from the previous record and tour before they hear, hear something else. Um, you know, so who knows? But I mean, this is a great album. Uh, again, I think everybody should, you know, should pick this up. If you're a Bad Company fan and, you only, and you're only familiar with uh, the song Burning Sky, uh, you should definitely pick this up. I mean, you've got, you know, Peace of Mind, Too Bad, which is another cool song. Uh, you know, Everything I Need, Master of Ceremony. I mean, there's a lot of great tunes on this record. Uh, and unfortunately, it's, it's extremely overlooked, you know, in the Bad Company catalog. So much so 
that when they put out the first greatest hits album for Bad Company uh, in 1985, it's called 10 from 6, meaning 10 songs from 6 records. It's really 10 songs from 5 records because they didn't include anything from this album. Uh, however, other uh, greatest hits packages, uh, the 1999 anthology, and then the uh, there was a, the, I can't remember, I think 2016 or 17, uh, Bad Company, uh, like Deluxe Greatest Hits set, I can't remember what exactly what it's called. Um, you know, that does include stuff from Burning Sky. So, you know, it eventually did get a little respect on, you know, Greatest Hits packages, but, uh, you know, definitely overlooked, highly overlooked, and, uh, you know, should be, you know, given another chance uh, in your classic rock collection. So, I babbled on enough. That's all I've got for you this time. Like, comment, share, and subscribe to my channel below. Hit that notification bell so you can be notified when we put out new content. I've got the rest of my Inside the Vinyl series where we talk about Lost Classics, live albums, uh, and even do some unboxing. Uh, I've got some live coverage from various festivals and concerts over the last few years, and I've even got some mediocre disc golf coverage starring some mediocre players, myself included. So like, comment, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Peace out. <laughs> Come on. Come on. There you go, boy.